Hey guys, welcome to the Halloween edition of MacBreak Studio. This week, I'm going to show you how to use Final Cut Pro 10's color grading tools for makeup enhancement. Let's start by addressing the background. I'll add a color curves effect, then add a shape mask. I'll adjust it to fit her face, and reduce the feathering. Because she moves, I'm going to have to track the mask. I'll move the playhead to the beginning of the clip, adjust the mask position, then set the initial keyframe. I'll then move the playhead to the end of the clip and readjust the mask size and position. A second keyframe is automatically created at this frame. Now I'll just move the playhead between the first two keyframes and keep readjusting the mask until I have a good track. I'll select the outside mask button, then reduce the luminance in the shadows. I'm going for a creepy dentist office vibe, so I'll select the wood wall panels and with the red curve eyedropper, pull out most of the red in the shot. I'll then do the same for the blue channel, sampling the yellow wall, then dragging downward on the curve. I'll also increase the saturation on the green channel. Now the next series of steps is extremely useful if you want to create a color grade where you have independent control of each of your corrections. If you were using DaVinci Resolve, you would use nodes to do what I'm about to do. But since Final Cut Pro does not use nodes, I'm going to mimic that workflow using a series of layered corrections. I want to keep adding layers of color curves adjustments so I can work on different parts of the girl's face. I'll select the clip, press Command-C to copy it, then press Shift-Command-V to bring up the Paste Attributes window. Then click Paste. In the inspector, I now have two color curve effects applied. Notice that if I select Outside Mask, all my curves adjustments are copied from the first color curves effect. As you can see in the image, the curves are being applied on top of each other, which is a nice look, but I prefer only one set of adjustments applied to this image. What I want to do is remove the second set of curves adjustments, but keep the animated mask that was copied from the first corrector. Using the arrow at the top of the corrector, I'll reset the parameter. What's cool is, the color adjustments have now been removed, but the animated mask has not been removed. So I've just shown you a cool way to copy masks from one corrector to another. Now I want to create two more color curves layers that include the animated mask, but no other curve adjustments. So I'll copy the clip again, bring up the Paste Attributes window, then paste only Color Curves 2. The reason is, if I include Color Curves 1, then all my curves adjustments will be pasted as well, and I'm only interested in pasting the correction with the animated mask. I'll click Paste, then copy the clip again. Bring up the Paste Attributes window, turn off Color Curves 1 and 2, then paste again. Now I have four color curves applied one of which has the original background color curves adjustments, and three of which do not have the adjustments, but they do include the animated mask. I want to add a high contrast look to her face, so I'll select Color Curves 2, then select the Inside Mask button and do an extreme S-curve adjustment for the Luma channel. So her face is now isolated to Correction 2. Let's work on the red below her eyes by selecting Corrector 3, then use a color mask to sample the red in the shot. I'll increase the saturation of the reds in the shadows and drop the saturation in the highlights, creating an inverted S-curve on just the red channel. Because I've kept each of my corrections as separate layers, I can go back to Correction 2 and make adjustments to the contrast in her face makeup. The next layer to work on will be her eyes. They have way too much life in them for a zombie girl, so I'll select Correction 4. I'll make sure the original mask is disabled, then add a new shape mask, then shape it and move it over her right eye.
In order to see my correction without the distraction of the mask overlay, I'll disable it. Then pull down on the shadows and bring up the highlights. Of course, this mask will need to be tracked, so I'll re-enable the mask overlay, then set a few keyframes to follow her head movement. For the other eye, you'll need to create another mask shape, then rinse and repeat. As a final step to finish it off, I'll add one more corrector, this time a hue saturation curves effect, then use the hue versus hue control to make the red appear more blood-like in color. Then use the hue versus sat to give it a more ugly dry color. So, going back to the inspector, this is where we started and this is where we ended. And the great thing about this workflow is that each of these corrections is isolated to one part of her face. Color curves one is the background adjustments, color curves two is her face, color curves three is the blood makeup, and color curves four is the dead eye look. The only thing I wish I could do, and Apple, are you listening, is name these corrections so I don't have to turn them on and off.